So on today's episode of the 2X e-commerce podcast show, you're going to learn about the anatomy of creatives that drive maximal clicks on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. It's a great episode you don't want to miss, so please do stay tuned. Hey 2Xers, welcome to the 2X e-commerce podcast show. I'm your host, Kunle Campbell. Now on today's episode, we're gonna be talking performance marketing more on the creative side. The interview you're about to listen to is an interview I had with Lauren Swatch. She is the founder of Loft365, based out in California. And what they do exclusively is creatives that drive clicks and ultimately, you know, lead to, to conversions. Now on this podcast, we talk about creatives on, particularly for the direct to consumer e-commerce space on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, and Pinterest. She has massive experience with top brands, you know, such as Love Wellness, APL, Colourpop, Our Place, and Leaf, Leaf Shave, I think is, is one. She talks about many other brands that she's worked with on this episode. Now, why should you listen to this episode if you are stuck in a rot in the creative side, you need a bit of inspiration, you need to understand what drives a hook and what comes after a hook, the actual anatomy of creatives that lead on to actual clicks, you know, higher click-through rates, then you wanna listen to this episode. I'm actually going to bring her on to our masterclass session, which are pretty much a series of webinars to really dissect some of the principles we talked about on this podcast, just because she knows her stuff. We talk a ton and essentially about creatives. Now, if you haven't already, or this is the first time you're listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube, remember to hit the subscribe button wherever you are subscribed to this podcast. Leave us a review on Apple iTunes if you have access to that and just smash the like button on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. This is a value-packed episode, so I'm gonna keep this intro short. Enjoy the episode, and I will catch you on the other side. Cheers. Welcome, welcome to the 2X e-commerce podcast here, and this is a podcast dedicated to rapid growth in online retail. I'm Kunle, your host, and um Pretty much if you're looking to rapidly grow your direct-to-consumer e-commerce business, this is the right podcast to tune into. And the reason why is that um, I pretty much try and get um, a founder of an e-commerce business on this show or a a SaaS, you know, um, a rep from a SaaS e-commerce business or, you know, an expert to just share their knowledge to helping you sell more directly to your customers. And um, the remit is very, very simple. Um, can they help you grow metrics such as conversions, average order value, repeat customers, your audience size, and ultimately sales? And if they can, um, you know, I just bring them on to, to share their knowledge so you can take it with your team um, to test, you know, as a hypothesis. And you know, come back to me with results in you know a month, two, or even three within the quarter at the very least. Um, so I'm um, just welcome to the podcast. Um, and yeah, speaking of which, we haven't had um, you know performance. We haven't done. I think the last time we had someone from performance marketing was um, like a good quarter ago, um, and that was to talk about um, you know the the whole iOS um, fiasco with Facebook, and we'll, we'll, we'll touch you know based on, on that in a few months time. But today we're talking creatives, um, how to to get how to produce the most not just engaging but best converting creatives for Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, and Pinterest, and. I have none other than Lauren Swatch. She is um, just incredible because this is what she does. She she's not like a full service, you know, type, you know, agency. All she does is she studied what makes ads work through an agency called The Loft Three Two Five, and she she just studied it in, in terms of like what makes ad work ads work. She's she experiments. She creates ads essentially for top D2C brands like consumer e-commerce brands 
as well as um, you know media buyers across the span. Now, just looking at some of the branches worked with, Love Wellness, APL, Colourpop, um, Our Place, um, Left Leaf Leaf Shave, and um, there's one I saw on her website which is called Pill, um, and I think I have I've almost purchased from Pill, but I. One thing I know about the pill ads was um, I found them hugely engaging and compelling on Facebook. I actually, you know, firsthand saw those ads. Um, she works or lives in California. She's a thought leader in the creative, you know, profitable, just in the creative space in terms of creative strategies. And um, I'm absolutely thrilled to, to have her on the show. Welcome, Lauren. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I probably haven't done, done you sufficient justice, but could you take a, a minute to quickly introduce yourself and um, you know what you do at, um, at your agency, the Loft Three Two Five? Yeah, so we are a creative agency, a small creative agency working with uh, you know some pretty large clients like you said peel is one of them leaf shave and for them we really focus on their creative strategy and their creative ad design so we work in all platforms from facebook to P pinterest instagram TikTok, snapchat um, really diving into what works for them and really doing a lot of creative testing to really help them elevate their brand and um, elevate their, you know, their ad design. So heavily focused in, in that for um, our company. Super, super interesting. And I guess let's start out with what sorts of creatives are working right now in, in e-commerce, um, are we talking high production, um, you know, or are we talking user UGC, which is user generated content, or just somewhere in between a, a, a fine blend of, you know, both formats, what, what, what's really working? Yeah, so for us, the biggest thing that we've been seeing working is definitely user generated content. Um, I do think that having a blend of both is, is still really good to have because it's always good to have, you know, those high production shoots to kind of sprinkle into your account. But what has been converting the most is definitely user generated content. I think people just engage with it more. It seems more interesting and especially keeping everything very native to the feed and native to you know the platform just works really well and I think just people understand it and it looks like it's just another person kind of talking to them and I think that's why it does so well uh, that's interesting so what when you say native it sounds like a lot of work because um, Facebook is different to Instagram Instagram is different to Pinterest um, TikTok and snapchat so and this is going to be a really big question, but what, what <laughs> how do, how does, um, how, how, how does native content differ across these major platforms? Um, and I think that they're all in the mix, depending on what you're selling. Um, and, and how would you approach it, you know, from an e-commerce team? It seems very daunting from, you know, from a production standpoint. Yeah, I mean, it can be, <laughs> um, you know, it definitely, you know, you're right. Every platform is so different and you definitely have to sell to each platform. And so a lot of times, you know, what we do as a creative studio is we kind of like to do kind of these batch creatives. So taking you know, we already know what kind of works on Facebook and Instagram, but really kind of diving into all the other platforms, Pinterest, Snapchat, and TikTok, it is very, very different. And so a lot of times we have to kind of take a step back, really kind of see what the trends are on each platform, and then kind of do, like I said, this batch creative where we, we create a ton of content and then really kind of just sprinkle it out to kind of see to see what works for each one. But it definitely can be daunting sometimes because again, like you said, like very native to each platform is very, very different. So it definitely takes a lot of time to kind of see what's working, um, to really kind of see what will work for each 
um, client that I have. And, and what, what about orientation? Um, so what do you shoot with? Nine, nine by 16, four by five? Um, how, how do you sort of make adjustments? What's the safest aspect ratio to, you know, to, to, to kind of shoot, especially if you most likely will cross plat, you know, um, use piece of content, you know, on, on a Facebook and Instagram, for instance. Yeah, definitely nine by 16. So always shooting vertically is much easier than shooting in square. Um, because a lot of times, you know, obviously shooting in square, you only have a square <laughs> to work with. And so shooting in the vertical space is definitely a lot easier because then you can crop how you need to crop. That makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. So, um, UGC, that's what you guys do. Um, could you define it to to to, to users? Because um, there is UGC for reviews, where you mm -hmm. sort of incentivize you know um, customers to leave you know a review for a potential discount in the future, or even for in exchange for for a discount, or some you know some incentive. And then there's UGC from the perspective of making it appear very authentic but still getting a professional on board to create that piece of content. Um, what UGC are we talking about? I mean, it's, it's kind of a little bit of both. Um, it, you know, when I work with a lot of our content creators, they are already, you know, pretty well versed in the UGC space. And so they already know kind of what works. But for us specifically, especially with, you know, a direct to consumer um, agency, you know, we really have to focus on obviously the product and what we're mm. selling. So for us with UGC, it is a lot of reviews and testimonials. It is a lot of how to's um, and, you know, really kind of doing unboxing experiences, mm -hmm. um, you know, really kind of leaning into all of the aspects. So we try to work with them you know, give them a list or an outline of kind of what we need from mm -hmm. them to shoot. And then they will go go out and kind of do their thing and shoot the content that mm -hmm. we need, kind of hitting the key things that we need in order to, to use it in ad creatives. Makes, sense. Makes a lot of sense. And um, I guess this, this other question has got to do with like mapping the messaging um, from how would you go about mapping the, the, the messaging from a top of funnel and a mid mid slash bo bottom funnel perspective? Um, by that I mean, um, you know, do you sort of like an architect would do lay out a plan and say, okay, these are the messages I want to communicate to people who don't even know about our brand. And these are another set mm -hmm. of messages I think we should communicate um, in in this manner to you know people who know about our brand or people who haven't been to our website. Um, is there any sort of um, communication architecture going or planning, um, you know, going in the background before you even um, you know give the, um, the the creators you know um, a, a remit their remit. Yeah, so it definitely is a lot of, like you said, it is a lot of strategy. It is a lot of layout. Um, and how I like to kind of think of it is, <clears throat> you know, we want to have sort of these evergreen, <clears throat> excuse me, um, evergreen style content pieces. And <clears throat> it's okay. You could, you could report. You could no, try, take, take your time. We'll, we'll, we're not live, so you could you know, start again. If you have um, water, yeah, you know. so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so for us you know it is kind of laying everything out in an evergreen kind of way where we have content that we can use across all so prospecting and remarketing and then we also have the content that we need to really focus in on explaining what the brand is explaining what the product is um and just being very clear in that way and then we have more of kind of like the founder's story, those mm -hmm. type of things. So we do have to kind of lay everything out to make sure that we're hitting all aspects so that when we do get the creatives back, 
we can kind of filter them in the way that we need to when we're working on um, the pieces of content. Makes sense. Make, makes a lot of sense. Um, I think planning is so, so important. And um, another thing I found out, uh, well, I realized is um, it's so important to have, you know, people like you that are, you know, creatives. Um, so, so more right brain, you know, type, is it right or left? Um, have a <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, um, yeah, I think it's 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 right. Um, and then left, you know, left brain, very analytical people who are structuring out the campaigns and you know doing all the the, the more programmatic, you know, media buying, because um, I, you know, it's human to human at the end of the day, and um, you know that planning is so so important. Um, in, Another yeah. question I, I had um, was in regards to, or I have is in regards to um, just the, um, in terms of like the just duration and timing. Um, so we're living in a very fast paced world. Um, I've been hanging out on, on, um, on TikTok quite often, um, just studying the platform essentially. And, and I'm realizing that to, to actually even make it on, on TikTok as a creator, you need to speak really fast. You have to be able to, mm -hmm. you know, pace up. And um, they're able to condense a ton of information. It, it, it's like <laughs> YouTube on <laughs> on fast forward. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how's that playing out across the board? It, it just seems like the... Like creatives have a well, well. The, the, what's happening on TikTok is dictating down, you know, on on other platforms. Yep. Are, are you seeing that? And um, is there any brand yeah. advantage of that? Yeah, I mean, it's like you said. We are we're living in such a fast paced world. I mean, I do believe that on each platform the timing is very different. But 15 seconds is definitely kind of the longest I like to go on most creatives. But I mean, I'm seeing, I'm, I'm making creatives now anywhere from six to 10 seconds. Wow. So even shorter than 15 seconds and having to get as much information in there as I can. Um, and just making things very quick and fast because at this point I feel like more people, because they are just scrolling so quickly, you have to catch them right away. And it is, it is, you know, I am taking a lot of inspiration from TikTok influencers because they're doing it right. I mean, they, that platform is so engaging hmm. and you just, you go down these rabbit yeah. holes sometimes yeah. and I think they're just, they're doing it right. And so taking a lot of inspiration from them to translate it into the other platforms, I think is actually a really good way to kind of look at creatives yeah. now. And, and the, I, I also think there's like an arbitrage opportunity um, by using TikTok creators, um, you know, for, 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 for your Facebook media buying or your, your Instagram and just, you know, as you said, giving them that, um, remit. Are you, are you finding that at the moment? Um, since you, this one. Yes. Right? Yeah. We're definitely using TikTok creators for sure. Um, especially with user generated content. Cause like I said, they, they just understand how to, tell a story so quickly and they're just really good at engaging you right away so we are definitely taking a ton of tiktok trends and adding that into all the other platforms but still it's kind of interesting because we're taking the trends from tiktok but having to make them native to each platform is definitely, you know, like you have to do your research. Mm. You have to know what works for each platform, but then you can take the learnings from TikTok and kind of translate it down to, to everything else. Right, right. And it goes back to that strategy. So the, the TikTok mm -hmm. people have the skill. You just need to guide them on, on how to, you know, build something out for Instagram stories or Snapchat or, or Facebook mm. feed. Exactly. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's, that, that's, that's super interesting. Um, where, what does the, if you were to dissect, you, you just talked about, you know, running videos six <laughs> to, you know, 11 seconds. So, so what does the first three seconds look like? How do you get that stop scroll effect? There's so, there's so many gimmicks out there. There's so, everybody's trying, you know, everybody's trying to get people to stop while they're scrolling. Um, 
what were you saying working any nuggets for for listeners of, of the 2xe coach podcast yeah i mean it's really funny because again taking a lot of the tiktok trends that are going you know that are out there um really kind of you know there's a lot of those trends right now where it's you don't see anything and then all of a sudden you see a hand kind of pop up mm. um out of nowhere <laughs> um using a lot of those and really just trying to show that product within the first three seconds mm. is is huge for us because again you only have you know six to ten seconds to grab someone's attention so you need to get that whatever you're trying to sell within the first three um, or even, you know, sooner, like a one second, mm -hmm. you know, um, scroll through. And, you know, the biggest thing that I've actually been doing is asking a lot of questions or kind of having those like, you know, kind of punchy headlines mm -hmm. of this product changed my life or this is the skincare that's, you know, um, a social media sensation, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like people will, you know, kind of want to be intrigued a little mm -hmm. bit. And I think a lot of times just kind of pulling out those questions or kind of making them kind of ask the question to themselves, like, oh, why is this, you know, the best skincare or whatever? It's just really trying to get that in the user's face as quickly as possible to get them engaged to want to, you know, learn and, more. And leave a comment, I guess, you know, um, without social proof. Right. Um, personally, so, so I, I buy, I'm, I, so I buy ads, you know, but not full time. But personally, I have found that um, finding ads that um, sell fashion, as in getting that form, till today, let, let me confess, I still haven't found the formula for ad creatives that sell like trendy fashion like you know it could be shirt suits um females like dresses oh i i dug actually i i i i've done it before but um i found i found it i think yeah i found it cha more challenging let me put it that way because i've seen a bit of success <laughs> with with female fashion but i found it more challenging um p putting ads together for um for fashion as compared to very functional like a, it's mm -hmm. like a you know something that that just solves a problem you know a shaver or um you know um a remote control you know something that's really functional versus mm -hmm. something that's subjective you know I, I wouldn't know if you'd like that floral dress you know i have to test and test and test and right. so what was happening, at least with the with the success that that you know I saw with, with fashion, you know, e-commerce was lots of carousels. So with with, with the carousels, we, we were sort of um, increasing our chances by giving you know ten options to in in one horizontal space. You know, in one space, you know, people could just um, swipe and swipe and swipe till they you know love what they they they, they liked. And you you'd probably also want to change the settings in the carousel to to make sure that. Um, Facebook sort of chooses, pre-selects, you know, what mm -hmm. card will work rather than you putting it there because, you know, you don't really know. Um, am I, like, wrong? What, what, what's, your, what's your experience, you know, um, in, in the trenches from, um, or do you have any advice, rather, for um, fashion in terms of creating, you know, um, just effective ads for, for fashion? Yeah, so I, I work with a company called Feet Clothing and they sell um, hoodies and just more like kind of lounge mm -hmm. wear. And at the beginning, that was kind of a big, a big thing for us. It was really hard to kind of figure out, you know, what works because it's, you know, fashion is so subjective and it's either you like it or you don't. Um, and so a lot of the, you know, the big things for us were, yes, obviously doing you know, the carousels, those really worked, but it was kind of more building on how these pieces can integrate into your current wardrobe. So not only can you have this <clears throat> carousel, but you can layer it onto, you know, your favorite pair of denim, or you can layer it onto leggings or whatever. Um, just really sort of building out the outfit 
and really making it very clear as to how you can kind of add on to this, these styles. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, a lot of actually the high end fashion brands too, like Gucci, Fendi, um, you know, they're, they're taking a lot of those TikTok style trends right now too, Mm -hmm. and actually kind of adding them into their ad creative. So doing a lot of the snapping and changing the outfits or, um, you know, kind of the the jump. jump. Yeah. I mean, exactly. Like they're, I mean, even high end fashion brands are taking the TikTok Hmm. trends. I think the biggest thing is just, again, capturing people's attention and getting them to, you know, want to, to purchase the clothing. Circles back to TikTok. (laughs) Always. (laughs) Wow. 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 It's, it, I, I, I don't know how it, it's amazing. I, I found I found it more entertaining than, than um, Clubhouse. I, I don't know. I, I tried Clubhouse for for yeah. weeks, and then I just thought uh, time suck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I kind of got the same thing too. I got really excited, and then I was like, "Nah, I'm over it." <laughs> <laughs> fascinating, fascinating, fascinating. Okay, um, so so. I think we've got to the consensus that, you know, UGC is it um, and you, you really need to be um, sympathetic to the platform. Um, we have talked about Pinterest. Um, Pinterest, mm-hmm. is Pinterest dead or, you know, when and alive or is it very specific to to, to certain, um, you know, verticals? Yeah, I definitely think, I don't think Pinterest is dead. I actually... You know, Pinterest actually does really well for a lot of my clients, and I think it depends on who, like, what the product is. So, a couple of the brands I work with, you know, skincare brands do really well on Pinterest. Um, I have another home brand that I work with that that's doing really well on Pinterest. Um, so, I think it it definitely depends on the vertical for sure. Because I think you just, you have to know how to talk to Pinterest people. Like when you think about Pinterest, it's mostly, it's mostly women. Um, You know, they're looking for those kind of, you know, hacks or, you know, how I can, you know, get my skin looking amazing and, or how can I, you know, a DIY of how can I redo this room. And I think the biggest thing is just really talking to those people and making those ads very specific to those sorts of platforms Mm -hmm and understanding who your audience is and how to talk to them. So I definitely, you know, a lot of the brands that I work with, the skincare brands, we do heavily um, promote on Pinterest Mm -hmm. and they are doing really well. And it's a lot of kind of those like five minute skincare routines Mm -hmm. or add this to your skincare routine. And those get really good traction because again, it's it's women scrolling through, looking at Pinterest, trying to get those kind of quick ideas and then engaging with those ads to, to get the product. What formats work on, on Pinterest um, ad format? Um, we definitely see a lot of stills working. Static creatives work really well, again, because it looks it looks like a pin that you can pin to your feed. And so I think statics do really well on Pinterest because again, it looks very native to the platform. Um, Video is starting to trend better. Again, I think for skincare, it works really well because people want to see how they can add it into their routines. Mm -hmm. Um, So for skincare, I definitely think that video works better. But most of the things that we're testing on Pinterest are static images. Interesting, interesting. Um, Then on Facebook and Instagram, um, when should you, when must you use static creatives? I actually think you can use them all the time. I mean, on Facebook and Instagram, I don't necessarily think that that static creatives are dead. I mean, I know a lot of people would rather use video because they think video is more engaging, but to be honest, I've seen a lot of wins with statics because when you really think about it, it looks very native to your feed and you get the product within the first three seconds and it's clear what it is. So I, you know, sometimes I, you know, videos can be a little overwhelming because there's so much going on Mm -hmm. in them. Whereas a static image, if you have a great lifestyle photo, it does convert really well. So I would definitely say don't, don't 
underestimate your static okay. and, um, and photos. With the static, they approach should, should it be should it be professionally, you know, um, put together UGC? What what's the approach? I think it, again, I think it can be both. Mm. Um, you know, great product photography is still a win. Um, you should always have it. I I feel. And even, you know, those user generated content pieces where people shoot it, you know, in a, in a, in a lifestyle format, I think are also really great to have. So I think a mixture of both is Absolutely. always good. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, when Google AdWords was like massively expanding, they quick re they, they quickly realized that um, they, they needed like a turnkey um, you know, add one solution for like small businesses where, you know, um, for mom and pop shops where they just put in, they fill in, you know, quick form essentially. And then Google just does the job in terms of like um, creating the ads for them and distribution. Mm -hmm. it was, I think it's called AdWords Express and it's still, you know, a product. It's, it, it's like a black box for advertising and it's done tremendously well to, you know, onboard a ton of small businesses with that with on, on AdWords because they I think they give lots of like you know coupons for free to get them started. Do you think mm -hmm. that because I do do you think I don't want to be subjective with this with this question but do do, do you think um, Facebook with the dominant or with the importance rather of um, creatives Facebook might do something similar um, and. Yeah, do, do, do you think we're, we're going to be, we're, we're about to get into like a very creative forecast um, media buying world, especially in the small business you know, space? Yes, I definitely think that creatives are going to be, be big. Um, I think that, you know, there's so much competition out there and especially for small businesses, you know, they're having to compete with these really large budgets. And I think if you have a smaller business, really getting those winning creatives, I think are, are just going to help you. Um, but I, I definitely think that, that things are trending more towards the creative for sure, because people just really are starting to realize how important it is to have good creative, um, you know, in, in their their marketing. Yeah. There was an observation I made a few months ago and I put it out on our Facebook group and um, I, I don't, the, the details are a bit fuzzy but I'll give you a, a, just the, the general thesis of it. I, um, I realized that um, fast paced videos were um, very ideal for like top of funnel stuff and um, I, re I then I, I, then um like slow mo videos were really good for fashion like you know um, maybe you're trying to sell a pair of iconic trousers for instance or loungewear um or mid funnel stuff trying to you know give a specific feature so fast fast pace you try and you know just bundle a lot of um you know um data a lot of information through people are engage you bring them in and then um at mid funnel you're slowing things down a little bit and you know giving one feature a time per per ad um do you agree or, or not agree it was just um, a thesis actually i do agree um i it's funny because you know i i think this this kind of depending on who you talk to <laughs> for media buyers sometimes um you know sometimes they want to reverse mm -hmm. it um and have more you know brand and like slow-mo and features and all that at the beginning i disagree and i think that you need to get people in quicker and once you have them in your funnel that's where you can really start to talk to them more about your product and really just engage them more. Um, I mean, really at the end of the day, you know, direct to consumer, you're selling a, a product, you're selling a service. And so you want people to click on your piece of creative or your ad to get them into your funnel. And then that's where I definitely think you can talk to them more and really kind of slow things down and break everything down in a much more cohesive way so that they understand. So I so agree. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. 
<laughs> okay. Um, finally, um, you know, click through rates. Um, I, I, I know you're, you're exclusively, you know, um, on the creative side, but um, do you have any tips on um, for, for people to, to improve? Well, benchmarks first for create for for click through rates, if, if you have any, and then um, you know, just tips on improving click through rates. Yeah, I mean, again, creative testing, I think, is always so big, and if you're not creative testing, then I, you know, I definitely feel like you should kind of rethink your strategy for, for paid because the biggest thing that you want to do and, and a big benchmark for me, especially for creative is the click through rate, because obviously I want people to click on the ad to go, you know, to click through. And if the click through rate is really low under a 1%, I definitely kind of reevaluate a little bit and just think like, okay, it's not getting the clicks I want to, it's not getting the purchases that I want. Um, how can I rethink this ad creative to engage people more quickly and get them interested to actually click through? So I heavily rely on click through rate and um, really creative testing. The The te creative testing strategy is, is very big in um, what we do. Super, super, super. I, I know we haven't talked about this over our conversation, but um would you use the same creative strategy or are you are some of your clients using this um, using your assets the assets you know your agency helps um you know create um in their email and sms um you know um campaigns for congruency yes on some of them they do we do try to combine each um, but again, I feel like SMS and email are their own separate platform and own separate entity. And so email and SMS is definitely, again, quick and, but email is also slow too. Mm -hmm. So you can definitely have more information, but we do utilize some areas of what we're testing in Facebook in SMS and email. Um, but again, that is a whole different strategy that, you know, we kind of work on, um, you know, to fill those pieces as well. I mean, it's so funny. Every piece of <laughs> marketing is so exactly. different exactly. <laughs> and you just really have to kind of like, you know, hire those specific people that know how to, to pivot for each one because exactly. <laughs> it's always changing. Exactly. It, it is. And um, you could use a single channel to skill you significantly and then, um, you know, start to look at your options again. Yeah. Aaron, um, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure. I, I love, you know, um, speaking, um, you know, performance um, and I just love creative. So um, it, it's, yeah, this conversation was, was, was great. Um, so, for those looking to, um, to well, for those who want to find out more, um, Laura's site is the loft. That's T H E L O F T three two five dot com. Um, are you active on um, social media channels? Where is the best um, to, to link up from the show notes to to to, to for people who want to follow you? Yeah. So. Pretty much uh, Twitter is actually the biggest thing. I am, I am obviously on Instagram, but I'm more Pinterest, active on okay. Twitter. Um, so it's Loft325 on Twitter. Awesome. We would um, give you a follow and um, we'll definitely link to you from, from the show notes. It's been, been, been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much again for having me. This has been Thanks, great. Cheers.